You interface with small business owners, particularly those who seek funding. What has been your experience? Um, fun of this period of uh, lockdown, uh, this period where every business is shut down. It's been difficult for a lot of businesses to scale. And we found out that there are businesses that have actually um, just fixed a few things for their businesses and then um, they were unable to sell their products. So uh, we, I started the pitch to make sure that I, I can identify these businesses, understand what their issues are, um, are and then we help them. So we started with um, giving these businesses the first businesses, we, um, 35 businesses, 100,000, and we gave other two businesses that we feel, feel like needed the money to scale to another level. Uh, five five thousand dollars each. So I've been well. I, I found out that in Nigeria right now there are a lot of very brilliant businesses across the, ac ac across Nigeria that are actually looking for money to scale their businesses. And if these these businesses can get a lot of this money, they'll be able to do better. You know. So um, I was happy I did that. My experience was great. I learned a lot from them. For me, it felt like a business school for four weeks every day during the pitch. So it felt like a business school for me because I was learning from them. You know, when you feel like you know something, but you actually see someone that might not be as, um, as educated as you are, I've experienced, uh, uh, explained your experience about business. So it was really nice. All right. Now, in terms of the viability of these businesses, how profitable are the average pitches, pitched ideas? Well, all the businesses, like especially the ones that got to the top eight, they are really scalable and they, are, they, are, they will be very profitable. Because I, was, I had a lot of uh, top uh, executives tuned in. Um, some of them commenting, asking questions. So we're able to um, ask this business a few questions. We, we got their, their testimonials, their documents, uh, their sales report, their bank statements. We saw everything that they've been doing. Some of them were making 20 million in three months. Some of them were making uh, 15 million in two months. You know? So when we looked at their bill, we found out that what they needed was to scale, right? And for them to scale, they need money. So we're able to give them money to scale in the departments, uh, different parts of their businesses that, that were very, very important to them. So um, the businesses, trust me, are very, very viable. Um, you know, every business is viable depending on how you take care of it. But what we've done so far is we've, uh, we've set aside uh, a team to uh, look into these businesses properly as well uh, and coach them properly and make sure that they succeed. But they're very viable businesses. What do investors look out for before approving of a, of a business venture? So a lot of investors don't want to start a business with you. They want to, act, uh, they want to look into your business and see what you are, the numbers you are currently doing. How much, are you, how much is your turnover every month, right? How much is your, uh, uh, your profit every month? They want, to, they want to look at that. And right now, because of COVID-19, a lot of people are looking for, okay, this business is this way. How are you able to scale this business or how are you able to still make your business succeed in, during this lockdown? What are the things you are doing? So for me as an investor, the things I look at is the profitability of the business, the scalability of the, that business, and how, um, how uh, friendly it is in the society, how um, people have used it, the testimonials I see from uh, people, uh, customers that have used the business. That is what I look for. And once all those things, all those um, things are ticked, I put my money in it. So as an investor, I look at all those things, profit, um, revenue, uh, um, scalability, and then, yeah. Then finally, what missing elements are most common with startups which inevitably affect their potential for growth? So a lot of people, you see, a lot of businesses in Nigeria, and I'm, I'm sure it happens in other parts of the world, so I'll use Nigeria as a case study. Mm -hmm. For example, I'm selling a bottle of granite, right? Now, I sell that granite, eat the profit and buy another granite, right? So some people, at some, a lot of businesses have started their businesses very well. The businesses are good. But what they do is they don't invest as much as they are meant to invest in the business when they are making money. So some, some startups wants to, want to make money and then be, be living large. You know, you need to understand that a, life, a proper lifespan of a business is at least five years for you to start making proper profit, right? So some businesses always feel like, oh, when I, when I start selling and I'm making, I sell, it, maybe I buy, buy a bottle of granite for uh, 50 naira and I sell it for 75 naira, right? So instead of to buy another bottle of granite, right? And sell for another 75 naira and know that once you sell the second bottle of granite, you have 50 naira to buy three bottles, right? So what they do is every time they sell that bottle of granite, they will, they will take the uh, 25 naira profit 
and eat the 25 naira profit and still be buying one one bottle so when they can actually spend more money to scale it. so and, um, all these startup businesses they need to understand that um it's important for you to understand the differentiate between your business money and your personal money once you can do that you scale and you do well in business african entrepreneur and investor will be franklin thank you very much for joining us on the news thank you so much thank you for having me